this is my cup of tea, so to say. So uh, field campaigns, precinct walking, door knocking, phone banking, um, it, it's something that I feel is a necessity for any campaign. Again, whether you're running for a local district or for supervisor, assembly, or Congress, we're working with a gentleman who's running for Congress uh, up north in Shasta County right now. And, you know, he, he ran unsuccessfully a couple of years ago. Uh, and when we first met with him, we said, well, you know, how many doors did you knock on in that campaign? He said, I didn't, I didn't knock on any. And I said, well, that's going to change now. <laughs> so, I mean, that as the candidate, you know, it, it, door knocking, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about door knocking first. Door knocking says a lot to different people. Um, if you're the candidate, you know, you've taken time out of your day to go to this person's door and have a conversation with them about their campaign and the issues. There is nothing more valuable to your campaign than being able to do that. Like we discussed before, you definitely want to be able to touch everybody. You want to touch them with mail and, you know, touch them with your walk piece. But if you are the candidate, nothing more effective that you could do than go out there and be on somebody's door. Um, the other thing, so you send volunteers out. You got volunteers that are fired up about your campaign. They're going door to door. That says something to the voter as well. That says something that this person with, you know, limited time, they probably have a family, they probably have, you know, uh, better things to do in their day. They took time out of their day to come to my door and everybody else in my neighborhood and talk to me about somebody else. They must really believe in that person. Just like Dick said, you know, you, you go around, you'll see the people that take your yard signs and then their neighbors drive by and they see them, that's what has an effect on them. If you're the candidate and you're at their door, if you have a volunteer at their door, they're going to remember that on election day. This person took the time out. I'll tell you, you know, I moved to Marin in 2006 and I, I you know, honestly didn't know nothing about anything. I come from a place where there are no sanitary district elections or anything like that. So when somebody, I was living in Terra Linda at the time, when somebody came and knocked on my door and said, I'm running for uh, Las Galinas Sanitary District. You know, I, I would love to talk to you about the issues. I'd love to talk to you, you know, about getting your vote. And I talked to her, and, and come election day, no other candidates had come by. She came back again, and I said, listen, you don't even need to talk to me now. You have my vote. You know, I, I mean, and not just because I'm the type of person that respects somebody that goes door to door, but because, really, she showed that she was putting in the effort. And she was not an incumbent. She was a first-time candidate, and she really went out there and, and, and pounded the pavement. That had a, a really big effect on me. Again, as I said before, you want to make sure you're targeting your field strategically. Biggest question I always get from volunteers, candidates, you name it, when they come back from the field the first time, why am I not going to every door? Well, I'd hate to break it to you. I know Marin is a really registered and engaged community when it comes to voting, but not everybody in Marin is registered to vote. I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not going to waste your volunteers' time sending them to somebody's door. The other thing is, again, I talked to you about it before. Uh, there are two ways to get voter lists. You could go to the county and get their list, which is a list that has no propensity options, doesn't tell you how often people vote. I tend to go with a, a more respectable vendor and, and more proven vendor in California to get my list. And we target them down. I only want, if I'm sending volunteers to the doors, I'm only sending volunteers to the doors that have voted in three out of three or four out of the four of the last San Anselmo Town Council election, Nevada Sanitary District election, whatever that race is, because I do not want to waste your time. I do not want to waste your volunteers' time. And frankly, materials cost money. I don't want to waste those either. Um, phone banking, you know, again, you want to be targeted. You could call, cast a little broader net. You're always going to hit more people on the phones than you can in the doors. People aren't going to be home. Um, you know, it takes longer to get from one house to the other. You know, that's fine. You want to be phone banking, you know, later in the campaign when your volunteers have less energy and, you know, are able, phone banking is something you can get them to do at their house. So, you know, two strategies that you really, really should employ in every campaign, again, no matter if you're running for dog catcher or uh, U.S. Congress, and I'll turn it over to Lee's now. I, um, I'm a firm believer in strong field work, and I've, um, Heck, I ran 130 volunteers for four weekends in a row to carry brochures to the voters of the city of Oakland because we didn't have enough money to mail. And we didn't have a lot of organized competition, but we just didn't have the money to mail. And so it was like, what the heck are we going to do? Well, it was an issue campaign. It wasn't a political campaign for a candidate, which is different. 
So for the flatlands of Oakland, which were not safe for our people to walk, or we didn't feel it was safe, and we didn't want, want to be responsible for anything happening to them, we got the message out to the churches. The churches in Oakland had very high voter registration rates. And so we had pastors preaching it from the pulpits. Okay. Then we have, you gotta work with the strategy, you gotta hit, try to hit those homes where people are registered to vote or are likely to vote. And the one thing I really wanna say about volunteers, and I know this because I have been a volunteer, is that you must appreciate them. Mm -hmm. Nothing is worse than when you don't acknowledge the individual and joint contributions of your volunteers. I don't care how you do it. You cannot say thank you enough. I mean, I've given, uh, I gave a year and a half of my time and then another 10 years to make sure the 65 million was spent right entirely as a volunteer. But I got a lot of appreciation from the people around me and it really made me feel great. And it made me friends for life. So be, be very clear in expressing your gratitude over and over and over again. And when you talk on the phone, we're talking about phone, put a smile on your face every time you pick up the phone. I don't know if you guys know about what uh, John Lennon said about living in New York. He said there was one thing more important than anything else if you're gonna live in New York. You gotta give good phone. <laughs> okay, give good phone. That means getting on the phone to thank people, means getting on the phone to engage people and get them working for you. It means getting on the phone to ask them for money. And it means getting on the phone to thank them for the money. It means getting on the phone to saying, look, you've already given me this money, but please come to this event. I just need you there. I want people to see you there. Okay, because that's your buy-in. And that's gold to your volunteers. They love to hear that. I love to hear that. We work on one pro, pro bono campaign every single year and nothing makes me feel better than when that contribution is acknowledged, respected, and it's, it's terrific, okay? That's it. I just want to say one last thing. What Lee said was really, really important. Thank the volunteers. You need to appreciate them. Uh, Sue Brown, who was, you know, for a while in the Ross Valley Sanitary District, she has a, you know, real big base of support in the Ross Valley. She always told me, um, I don't want to use volunteers, I want to appreciate them. You know, so that is tremendously important. And again, the other thing is, when we talked earlier about, you know, locking you in a room if you're the candidate to do your fundraising calls, we do the same thing with our volunteer calls for our candidate. They get in that room another two hours calling volunteers, getting them to come out. Because you can't do any of this phone banking or door knocking unless you have the volunteers. And I just wanted to thank Eva and the Marine Women's Political Action Committee and Lees for um, asking us to participate, and, and this has been wonderful, and thank you all for listening. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, yes. Question. Sorry. You know, we said on the phone, we said you call your volunteers, get people engaged, and then you said like four other things. Oh, okay. So you're gonna you're gonna make use the phone as your important tool. And and now of course we have email. When John Lennon said that, we didn't have email, <laughs> and we didn't have social networking, which is something we didn't talk about tonight. But maybe on some of these down ticket races, it may not be as important. Um, you know, it worked. David Plouffe's book on the Obama race was big and important. But you're gonna use the phone to ask people for money, ask people for their labor contributions their work contributions, and you're gonna use the phone to thank them for those contributions and to thank them for their labor and acknowledge them. Then you're going to try to use the phone to make connections between people. When you can grow connections between people who may be separated by those degrees of separation, if you can bring people together, they always remember the person who brought them together. They always remember the person who made it fun. Also, try to have a campaign committee that meets in someone's home. Use people's homes, and don't forget to thank the hostess. Bring hostess gifts. Bring flowers. Have a party at the end of your campaign. Have a party, a pizza party, at the beginning of your campaign. Ask, ask neighborhood restaurants to donate food so that you can feed your, um, your people. You know, engage people on all different levels and thank them. And put their names in print. Okay, put their names in print. Yes? Could you speak a little about timing, walking the precinct? 
there is, you can walk a precinct at any time, but it's probably most important to walk three weeks before the absentee mailers hit. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. And the best time in the day on weekdays, it's generally between 4 o'clock and 7 o'clock when people are home. On the weekends, you're looking a little earlier, earlier in the afternoon around like, you know, between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. You could even go out a little later. It's kind of spotty in a place like Marin where, you know, people like to take off and, and particularly in the summer. So if you have a race coming up, next June, you know, it's a little tougher to engage those people. Though in November, they, they still tend to be home. If they're a football household, they're definitely home on Sunday. And don't forget your seniors. I found that in the initiative campaigns that I've worked on and in the issue campaigns, whether they were for Marin Open Space, Oakland Open Space, Save the Mustangs, or anyone else, it was the seniors that made the best volunteers. Mm -hmm. You know, not necessarily even retired seniors, but seniors. They give. They really give, and they give, and they network, and they have long experience in networks that grow out like an octopus's arms into other groups and other organizations and tap people for who they know. Who do you know? Who do you think I should be talking to? Ask as many questions as you make statements of fact. Ask as many questions to get from them who they know, what they think is important, engage people. That's the, the, at bottom line, that's, that's the most important thing you could do. Because you're in the business to make communication happen. Let's not forget that communication goes both ways. Thank you. Thank you so Thank you. much. And I'm, I can take a few questions afterwards, too. Okay.